My name's Rowan Watson, and I've been a fellow of the South Adventist for more years than I care to think, and have profited enormously from his absolutely fabulous resources. Um, professionally, I worked in the Victorian Albert Museum as a curator and looked after special collections in the, in the National Art Library. And I want to say something about Antiquities Manuscript 13. Manuscripts, of course, unlike books, don't have authors and titles and that kind of thing, so you have to just refer to them by a shelf mark or, or, or a manuscript number. Well, why is it here? It's, it's a prayer book and it was collected by Samuel Latoulier. It's a Catholic prayer book, of course, um, and uh, Latoulier is, 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 is a Protestant before his death, a Huguenot stock, and before his death in, uh, in, in 1760, he collected a number of, uh, of books of ours and in the uh, list made of his works after his death, they're referred to as Gothic, G-O-T-H-I-C-K, a, a, a manuscript. So they're obviously for him, the historical uh, monuments. And it is that kind of collecting in the 17th century by people, 18th century by people interested in, in the past that we owe an awful lot to in saving, in, in saving these things. After his death, it was bought by his friend, Charles Littleton, who was Bishop of Carlisle, on whose death in 1768, he left his fabulous library. To the, uh, to the Society of Antiquaries. Um, well, it, Antiquaries 13 is a book of ours. Now, what is a book of ours? Well, it's a prayer book. Uh, the contents, this, the texts in the books of ours can be extraordinarily inter in interesting. And there's a great generation of liturgical scholars in the sort of 19th and the early part of the 20th century who have written some very interesting things. We're really getting into the sort of what is the psychology of, of the population, what their fears are, and, and how they cope with, the, uh, with that. It's often very interesting, the standard part of the Book of Hours might be the offices, the office of the dead, um, a litany, penitential psalms, but, but it's very common in Books of Hours, as in Antiquities 13, to have a series of prayers added in on the end, with rubrics telling you what the, uh, the, the prayers are for. And the rubrics can be, can, can, uh, tell you very graphically exactly what the prayers going, are going to do for you. Well, Antiquities 13, Manuscript 13, comes from Rouen. And how do we know that? Well, the first reason we know is that if you go through the texts, the Office of the Virgin is of um, the, the selections made for, for every hour correspond to the tradition used in the diocese of, um, of, 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 of Rouen. So it's known as the use of Rouen, and you find that in the 13th, 14th centuries, most dioceses had their own had their own uses. Uh, in the late Middle Age, everything becomes a standardised. So England defaults to the use of serum, serum being the old word for, for a Salisbury, and other uses of York and and, uh, and Worcester are really are, are really pushed into the background. The use of Rome becomes a, a totally standard, and, and the use of Paris. So, in a way, you could say the texts are becoming slightly duller because they don't, they don't give you the clues. But other clues are that in the calendar, every book of ours starts with with the calendar giving the list of the feast days and the major feasts of the, of, 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 of of the church, it refers to saints associated with uh, with uh, with Rouen. So you get Saint uh, Saint Romanus. And, 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 and a number of, of others, which is extremely um, uh, telling. Uh, then you find in the litany, which comes after the penitential psalms, a series of invocations to saints by category of, of saints. It starts off with the apostles and then goes through, through other categories, martyrs, martyrs or bishops, and, uh, and so it goes on. And uh, interesting, right at the head of, head of this, you get a reference to Saint Ursinus, Saint Jesus, please pray, pray for us. And I, I think this is this is something you find in Rouen books of ours. They have the relics in the in the in the in, in, in the cathedral. On the other hand, Osinus is a rather problematic saint. Was he bishop of, of Bourges, or is, is, is it another Osinus? Son? Anyway, the cult is well established in Rouen. Uh, another uh, iconographic feature is that books of ours. Um, will begin very often with what are called pericopes, those are extracts from the New Testament, which just remind you of the basic message of, of salvation, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, uh, Luke and John, a very standard uh, selection. And the image that introduces them is uh, of uh, a page divided into, into four, 
and there's a little picture of each uh, evangelist in the four. And this is a very common in Noir books of ours. There are things like that. Uh, going beyond that, this is a remarkable manuscript in that there are notions of who owned them. Uh, it's quite, it's relative, it's not frightfully common to know who, who, who owned these books. We happen to have names of contemporary owners in, in, in this manuscript. They may not have been the first owners for whom the manuscript is made because there seem to be letters underneath the letters which spell out their name. But it's owned by one, the two names in it, Jean Dufour and Marguerite Austin. Austin. And uh, you can trace this. The Dufour family is a very prominent family in Rouen in, 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 in the 15th century. There is in Rouen the Church of Saint Maclou, which one is, 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 is one of the most wonderful buildings of flamboyant a Gothic, which still miraculously uh, uh, survives after what Rouen went through in the Second World War. Uh, and they were one of the major sponsors of, of this church. And there are a number of people called Jean Dufour who might be the, uh, the, uh, the person referred to. Uh, the Ostan the family is uh, rather more difficult to pin down. I can't find a Dufour in the archives who married a Marguerite, but it, it may be that there was an early death or, or, or something like that. It's pretty clear for a, whole, for a whole series of reasons that this is a manuscript made shortly after 1500, 1500 to, uh, to uh, 1520. Uh, well, Antiquaries 13 is really rather marvellous in being very densely illustrated and, and, and it's full of images. And it was essential for the Hours of the Virgin in particular to have a series of images with which, uh, which would guide your thoughts and would resume the historical story found, uh, found in, 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 in the Gospels. There's some very original pictures in here as well as standard pictures. There is, for instance, just before the Office of the Dead, um, a standard feature in, uh, in, uh, in Books of Hours. Um, there's a picture there of the owner of the book uh, looking at a, at, 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 at a scene of hell as a kind of reminder of what happens if you don't if you if if if, if you don't carry out uh, your uh, your devotions and so you see the threat that that hangs over the in in in, in, in individual if they haven't carried out their their uh, good works. Well, there are other rather wonderful pairings. It's the manuscript's quite original in that the hours of the Virgin are preceded by double pictures. There's an opening where you get a picture on each side. So, in matins, uh, 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 for instance, you get a very uh, a traditional image, which you could uh, follow back f uh, f uh, 50 years before um, this manuscript is carried out in the expulsion of Adam, of Adam and Eve. On, on one side, you get Ad Adam and Eve uh, with the serpent and the apple, representing the fall of man, expulsion from the Garden of Eden. And on the other side, you, you get the Annunciation which is the redemption of mankind. Christ, according to uh, Christian theory, has come back to, to save you, to make sure that, that the fall of man is, is not going to go on from ever, and that after death you will be received back, back into, in, into paradise. If you go to Terse of the, uh, of the Hours of the Virgin, you'll see there's a picture of, of, the, uh, of the prophetess, the uh, Sibyl, telling Octavian, Augustus said that there is going to be a greater ruler than, than, than he who is going to arrive in the world and there's a picture of the Virgin holding, hold, holding the infant Christ in, in the top so, so that's the kind of message and that is paired with the Annunciation to, to the shepherds where, which of course is, is, that represents it is announced to, to the whole of mankind that Christ has come and that the, the era of man's suffering is potentially uh, are coming to, to an end but I think one can end by saying that it is, it is uh, a remarkable product uh, done in, in totally uh, traditional ways. And one feels very grateful to Samuel Letoulier in the early 18th century of having seen this and said, ah, this, this is telling us something about the mentality and the, and the art and the devotional practices of populations in century.
in that that's Charles Littleton. Ah. And then if you just flip to the first one or so. Calendar. Mm-hmm. 